What is going on everybody? Welcome to yet another Python 3 Basics tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is how to get data from a CSV. So how, to, how do we read data from a CSV in Python. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So a CSV file is usually, it's kind of a popular file uh, type to be dealing with any sort of data analysis and stuff. As you get into bigger data, t data uh, sets, generally it's going to be more of maybe a database format, but CSVs are very popular and it's a pretty common question, how do we work with CSV files? So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, there is a CSV module built into Python. So we just want to uh, import that. So import CSV, lowercase. And just for the record, CSV stands for comma separated variables. That's it. Um, and actually, even though it says CSV and that means comma separated variables, we can actually use anything. We could have a delimiter, and the comma is what's known as a delimiter. And we can have anything as a delimiter. We could have triple spaces, tabs, new line, the letter X. Anything can be a, a delimiter, basically. So uh, moving right along, let us, um, I have an example file here. Let me move this over. So this is the directory that we're coding in right now. This is the script that I'm editing. And here is an example CSV file. So let me edit that with Notepad, cancel. And here we have some sample data, right? So we have some dates here, a couple numbers that just mean nothing, and then some colors, okay? Um, so we got that in this file. And what we wanna do is we wanna load that data into our Python script. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use with open. Uh, we haven't really talked much about this with statement, but we will get there. Uh, for now, we'll just, just code it with me, and whenever you're opening files like this, you can do this to kind of iterate through a file. Um, anyway, uh, with open, uh, and then we're going to do example.csv as csv file. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to say read, we'll call this read csv equals csv.reader uh, csv file, and then we're going to specify the delimiter, I always want to spell this wrong, as just commas, okay? So basically what this is going to do is it reads all of this uh, CSV data in. So let me just, let's, let's print out what, where we are at the moment. So read CSV. Uh, we'll save and run that. Come over here. Um, well, actually, that's not going to work. Um, here's what we'll do instead. So for row in read CSV, let's just print uh, row. Let's do that instead. There we go. Oh, and we don't need to be printing this anymore. I'm just going to delete this. Anyway, and your output looks like this. Okay, so, so that is the data from our sample CSV file. First bit of data was the date, then a number, then another number, then a color. Generally, when you're reading in data, uh, it's going to read everything in as a string. So if you ever want it, so keep that in mind. If you're going to be doing math operations or something like that on this data, that you will want to convert it to float into whatever. So let's close out of this. And so for row in read CSV, print row. Now, uh, maybe what we want to do is maybe access some of that specific data. So we could say print, you know, row zero. That would be your date. Um, we could also print and spell row right. Print row you know, zero, row one, stuff like that. Save and run it. And you see that we print, you know, um, you know, just the date, this is the date and the first element, um, and so on. Well, the index of one. Now, uh, generally what you're going to want to do when you read the CSV into memory, you might be wanting to do something with that CSV, um, and you might even want to store each column, let's say, in something. So instead, let us do the following up here. Say we just were caring mostly about dates and colors for now. Let's just say dates equals an empty Python list and colors equals an empty Python list. And then for row in read CSV, we're gonna do something. We're gonna say the color equals row, and that was the fourth element, so what index would that be? Three. And then date is the first element, so what index value would that be? Zero. So now, so we got date and color. Now we wanna do dates.append. We're going to add to this list uh, date and then colors.append this color. Dog under me is going crazy. Uh, so now that we're done with that, 
after we iterate through all of this, we can do the following. We can print dates, print colors, save and run it. And we come over here and now we have two separate lists. One list is all the dates, one list is all the colors. And each index corresponds to that, you know, the corresponding lists, values, right? So this is kind of why I was saying, well, dictionaries can be more useful because you could store the date as the key of the dictionary and then these values as the value of the dictionary, but we'll get there in a little bit. Um, and you can do all that with reading files. I just don't want to jump into dictionaries and reading CSVs all at once, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So now that you've done that, let's say we're not using a dictionary and we want to know, um, maybe we want to ask a question. So let's, let's do this. Let's say what color and what color is going to be equal to input and then what color do you wish to know the date of okay so this is going to ask our user using raw input that we kind of we've talked about raw input uh, in one of the earlier videos it's going to ask our uh, user what color do we want to know the date of and then we're going to say cold x for color index it's just a meshing of words cold x equals colors dot index what color so the user is going to type in a color and then we're going to say cold x is the list colors dot index of that color whatever color we've typed in and um, that's in this list that we've populated now with cold x um, that gives us the, the index number of that color and then what we can do is we can say the date of that color equals dates cold x and that will return to the date, what date that index of that color, whatever we typed in, is. Okay. Um, now we can print uh, the date of what color is the date. Okay. So we can run this um, even though we're going to know the answer. So. Green should correspond to 1, 3, 2014. So we could type uh, green. Whoops. Um, let's try that one last time. And we're going to talk about what just happened in a second. But green. And it says the date of green is 1, 3, 2014. Now, uh, just as an aside, whenever you have input like this, or maybe you're trying, I'm trying to think of some other circumstances besides, you know, input, or say you're like parsing data or something like, again, with sentiment analysis, you know, great, whether it's at the beginning of a sentence or in the middle of a sentence, still kind of carries the same, I guess great's a bad one, because great could mean a pronoun, but um, anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> um, I think of a, a better word, but a descriptive word, let's say, you know, at the beginning of a sentence, whether it's capitalized or not, um, doesn't really necessarily matter unless it's all caps or something. But say like with green, green is green is green. Okay. So whether the first letter is capitalized or not, it does not matter. So what you could do is what color equals, um, you know, this, we could say cold X, what color, and then dot lower. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure every letter is lowercase. So we can run this one more time and we can do green and it still works. Okay. The date of green is one, three, four, okay. Or 2014. So that's how we can do uh, handle something like that, but we'll get to that, uh, uh, that pro what we can do to handle these sort of errors, I think in the next video. Um, so anyway, I think that's going to conclude this video as far as uh, reading CSVs because now we're going to jump into error handling uh, in the next video. So if you guys have any questions or comments on reading from a CSV, storing it into some uh, uh, lists, uh, feel free to leave those questions or comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.